Act Court's demise are greatly exaggerated. Greatly exaggerated indeed. Here we are doing some React Court. We're back. It's just that simple. Hello, I'm large and in charge of the bottom right here. Um, am I the butthole for telling my cousin she doesn't get to call my wife a terrible mother when she had abandoned her child years ago? That's a great way to start it, I think, is just by, like, you know, the perhaps, like, the most dramatic thing that's ever happened to somebody in their entire life. Sure, let's give it a try. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to get right to it, folks. Yesterday, I went over to my mother, my mother a house, to talk about the accident that happened with my three-year-old who tripped off the stairs and injured his knee while I was at work. He's fine, nothing serious, but my mother was freaking out and wanted me to tell her what happened in details. The family was there as I explained what happened, and the, my female cousin then chimed in with and said, Oh my God, where the hell was this boy's mother? Was she even home? I said she was, but was in the kitchen when he fell and couldn't prevent it. My cousin then leaned back and said, How could she? I cannot imagine leaving my three-year-old unattended for so long. What a terrible mother. Wife's name is honestly. I'm fuming at this point. I look at her and ask if she's serious, and she gives me the most dense look I've ever seen. I told her she had no right to call my wife a terrible mother after she, my cousin, abandoned her, her kids in foster care years ago. She looks at me grudgingly and tells me, that that was years ago when she was too young and not ready to be a mother besides her parents made her give away her son. But I told her that is when she failed as a mother because she essentially didn't fight for her kid and abandoned him so easily. She lashed out at me saying her circumstances were difficult. I cannot blame her. But if she is to commit to be a mom, which she will in the future, she's 22, by the way, she will step up and parent her kids, which is something my wife needs to be doing instead of spending time in the kitchen for her internet clout. We argued back and forth, and she ended up leaving the room crying after I said she is a failure of a mother if she thinks my wife is terrible then. My mother berated me for unnecessary cruelty and having a habit of bringing up my cousin's unpleasant past to win an argument. No, you don't say. <laughs> um, I said that wasn't tries. As she was insulting my wife's motherhood, but my mother agreed my wife was being neglectful towards our son and that she needed to focus less on her Facebook blogs and more on family. This really does sound like an I think you should leave sketch. You I was you were in the kitchen cooking for your Facebook blogs and our kid tripped down the stairs, almost broke his knee. Look at this. And then it's like a, just a little cut. He almost broke his knee. I ended up arguing with her too, then leaving. My wife got involved in the argument after my mother called her to berate her and told her to tell me to apologize to my cousin for what I said. Um, well, like, first off, if you're going to run an ad for VIP Casino, then, like, pay me. Don't pay Reddit. Do not, do not listen to this and do not... This is how they hook you. Your EV on this is negative, I promise you. I'm, this is an anti-ad. This is an anti-ad for you. Um, the final verdict is not the asshole. 53% um, say not the asshole. 31% say everybody sucks here. I'm definitely in the everybody sucks here category. Um I, I think, I, and we can look at the comments. We'll do it quickly because we don't have a ton of time today. But uh, Reddit is always, the, the, the average am I the asshole Redditor is all about um, if anyone ever insults you, they better have lived the perfect life because otherwise you can turn it around on them and own them. If somebody else fires the first shot, it doesn't really matter how you... The, the magnitude of your reply to them if you have a single leg to stand on. So someone could, like, cut you off in traffic and, you know, then be like, watch where you're going. You'd be like, well, you should have watched where you were going when you uh, chose to get a, an English literature degree uh, instead of civil engineering in university, thus setting your life on a path of uh, fiduciary uh, minimalism. You know, they, they would be like, based, based, based. He shouldn't have cut you off. You don't have to go that far. You don't have to go that far. What the, the adult way to respond to this situation, your cousin insults your wife as a mother. Um, you say, hey, just so you know, I take offense to that. That's really rude. I mean, she's 22 years old overall. She's still really young. You don't have to drop the nuclear bomb on your family. That's, those are the people you're not supposed to drop the nuclear bomb on. You just say, hey, 
I'd like you to apologize for that. That's not nice. And then if they say, I'm not going to apologize, I'm 22 and invincible, then you can bust out the nuclear weapon. Then you can bust... Or you could just leave and be like, I'm not coming to the family gathering next time because she's kind of a bitch. Instead, you have turned a not the asshole into when everybody sucks here by really probably busting out the most emotionally turbocharged response that you possibly could have. Instead of just, you know, being the bigger person, asking for an apology, telling her it's not that cool. Instead, you were like, hey, you know this thing that's probably like the biggest mark of shame in your entire life? Well, let me, let's get into an argument about it for like half an hour. So I, for me, the cousin sucks as well, just for the record. But I would say this is like a, this is an everybody sucks here for sure. I don't even need to go in the comments. I have to imagine this has got to be like the straight, the straight answer, man. I can't imagine, like, uh, I can't imagine there's other people in the comment. Well, I don't know, because every time I always lose my mind, people will do the. It's not about the $3 that he borrowed and paid back. It's about the invasion of privacy. She's 28 years old, and she should be expected to just have her money be, uh, just to buy her dinner? I don't think so. It's about the privacy. It's about, okay, sure, sure, sure. Anyway, that one, I like that so far. I liked it. Next, would I be the asshole for suing a customer for damaging an extremely valuable item? This is the kind of thing that sends a chill down my spine. I'm trying to think. I, that one time, one time, I was in, this is college, I was in the liquor store. My companion with her boot accidentally knocked a bottle off of the bottom shelf, shattered it on the ground, and it was instant, like, burp, you know, like Metal Gear Solid. I didn't know what was going to happen. I was fully ready. I was fully ready to be like, you break it, you buy it. Uh, maintenance came over with a dustpan and a broom, and I'm up. And I was like, what's going on? Like, is this okay? And they're like, yeah, you guys can just move on. I guess that's breakage. That's something that is just, as long as it's an accident and it's not too serious, then it's not that big of a deal. Um... However, if, whenever I'm in like a furniture store, or like an antique place or something like that, this is what, this is what scares me. Yeah, don't you have to do dishes in the back? Like it was a, it was a two six of uh, Smirnoff. I, I think that's like at least two hours in the back washing dishes. They, no, my dad didn't make that up. They used to do that on sitcoms in the 80s, right? Uh, sir, your credit card's been declined. Oh, could it be that maybe your machine in the back that goes, chunk, 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 actually is just a piece of crap? No, no, it's got to be the card. And then you end up in the back. There's dis dishes in the back. You better roll up your sleeve. Anyway, sorry, okay. <clears throat> Let's see. For context, I run a business selling antiques and vintage items. Last month, a young woman walked into my store, blissfully unaware of the instructions she would soon cause. She walked around for five minutes, pausing her browsing only to take a selfie in a 100-year-old mirror. Oh, won't somebody think of the mirror? Oh, sorry to this, uh, oh, this vain lady used the mirror to take a selfie. Excuse me, that mirror is 100 years old. It's never been used before. I, I already kind of hate the poster just because of the fact that, like, you know, you, you got to present the issues somewhat dispassionately, objectively. Instead, they're making it seem like Paris Hilton came in and was, like, you know, licking all the donuts in the glass case and stuff like that. And, oh, she took a selfie. Anyone else hate selfies? Like, it's 2012 or something? Anyway. Sorry. Um, as she had so far been adhering to my rules of no touchy, I was no longer paying her any attention. However, if I had seen what item she was eyeing, I would have been. The pair together was initially valued around $4,000, and I had a bid for even higher. Okay, just take it out of the store then, dummy. Somebody... I, I, I don't understand. Is this like some kind of strange silent auction or something? Like, I don't like how he says no touchy as well. I don't know if that's him thinking that he's being cute. 
going like no touchy or if he's like being really offensive. <laughs> See, it seems condescending no matter what to say no touchy, but anyway. Well, clearly, I just, you have a $4,000 item in your storefront, just chilling, not even in like a glass case or anything. People try to touch it, no touchy. Like, how old are you, like eight or, or 78? Well, clearly she did not understand the idea behind valuable items being placed on a high shelf in an antique store, something that I would describe as, we learned that all in like middle school, I think. This woman proceeded to, standing on her tiptoes, trace her finger over the back of one of the vases where there was some fine detailing. Suddenly, clang! She had somehow managed, while barely touching the thing, to knock it to the ground, badly denting a spot of the detailing as well as a large part of the actual body of the vase. In all my time working in this industry, no customer has ever knocked something off a shelf like that. I didn't know how to react. Obviously, she was extremely apologetic and she explained she has a medical condition that causes her hands to sometimes jerk involuntarily. Look. I... I've been very much on her side for a while. I believe that that could be real. But then there is a part of me that's like, maybe refrain from the touching of the stuff in a store where things are valuable. Like the more that, you know what they say, like uh, getting the last word is good. Am I the asshole is actually like the exact opposite. Like the last person who acted, I'm like, they're the asshole every time. And then it, Someone replies to them, and I'm like, no, actually, you're the asshole now. It's like every action is just like a, we're just toggling the assholishness. She said that she can tell when these involuntary hand movements are likely to happen and was sure she felt fine, but my point still stands. Would she let a child hold an antique silver vase? Would she cover her hands in Vaseline and then hold it, Your Honor? Hopefully not. Therefore, touching the item was incredibly naive and, frankly, a stupid risk to take. Despite her damaging it being an accident, she, she, she said she could not at that moment afford to pay the full price of the vase, but could give me half a payment now and pay the rest in increments. However, I was close to selling the pair for full price. Now that one vase is damaged, my original buyer has decided not to take the set, rendering both vases valueless. I am not willing to wait however many months or years it takes her to scrape together an adequate amount. I want to involve the law as I think she owes me at least the highest bid for the pair of vases, but when I explained the situation to my friends, they acted as if I'm the villain. Man, this is like... This is just a guy that... I can just picture him in my head, and I don't know if that's fair. But I just picture that, like, this is the kind of guy who's in, like, the applesauce section of the grocery store. I'm just trying to get by to get to, like, the salsa jars. But he's got, like, his cart in the middle. And he's holding the side of it instead of holding the handle so that he takes up the whole aisle. And he's just pouring over. Mott's. Mott's sweetened. Mott's unsweetened. Organic, a little bit more expensive, but it's just apples. Like, it's just, I, I just see him, like, honey, I'm back from the grocery store. Thanks for telling me to pack those three granola bars. You were right. It was a journey. Um, I'm just confused mostly about this. Um, one of them is if you have a higher bid for uh, this pair of vases... Why are they still on display in the store? My hunch, and I'm, I don't have to prove this within the legal extent of the law, my hunch is that so when other people like you come into the store, you can be like, oh, you see those vases? They're worth 4000 but I got a bid for even higher. And then these other antique weirdos are going to be like, holy crap. Did you see that fine detailing? Also, I feel like if you're in... A business where things are fragile. I don't know how this works, okay? But you gotta have insurance, right? Like, if you run a, a porcelain shop, there's gotta be porcelain shop insurance that I'm sure is, like, expensive. But that's why you got it, right? Is so that when your customer comes in and, you know, breaks something, like, tacky as hell, like a like a, a Swarovski swan or something like that. Like they're not in debt for the rest of their life just because they happen to like trip over a duct tape extension cord on the ground and then fell into a shelf. 
It's just, I don't know if I'm like, you're the asshole. It's just weird. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I I kind of feel like, I mean, I, is there like a, you're weird, like a YW? You're the weirdo? Like, I don't think he would be wrong to sue. Would he be a little bit of a dickhead? I don't know. I actually, I have no idea. I feel like I, as much as I have a personal distaste for the way this person wrote this, I feel like I got to go in the comments and I, I got to steal someone else's opinion as my own. Let, let's see what we got here. You would be the asshole. She recognizes the fault was hers and took responsibility, offering you a solution. Even if you sued her in one, she cannot give you money she doesn't have. As a side note, there's no way in hell a court would award you the price of the highest bid. I forgot to mention this. This, it, I, that was the part that actually annoyed me the most. It was when she was, the, the guy was like, I think I'm entitled to more than its appraised value, but instead what like the highest person on earth would actually pay for it. That's just insane. That, that reasoning has no sense whatsoever. Um, a court would not award her anything. OP, you're the asshole. Not having any business insurance is illegal. Malf, did you know this? Are we in breach of the law right now? Do you have business insurance? If you cyber bully someone in chat and they get so sad they have to take a day off work, are we, <laughs> are we on the hook for that? I got to look into that, man. You're the asshole. Does your shop not have insurance for damages? Oh, that's right. Yeah, Jeffrey's got it probably, maybe. This feels like trolling, but in case it isn't, renders them valueless is false. She offered to pay you 2k up front and more over time. I, I mean, I'm like, dude, I just don't know. I just don't like this person. I don't know if this is fair, but I just don't like this person. I don't want to read the words that they wrote anymore. Quite frankly. I just find them unpleasant. Am I the asshole for making my son pass out the candy he got for trick-or-treating because he was being rude? Oh, this should be good. This should be good. My son is nine years old. We went trick-or-treating like we usually do, and the night was going well, except we got to a house that had a bat. Oh! That had a bowl of candy sitting on the porch and said, take two, please. He puts his whole hand in there, grabs about six pieces. Of course, I corrected him, made him put four of them back, explaining he needed to leave some for the others. From then on, he had an attitude. And the last straw was when I told him to stop grabbing so much candy from people. And he screamed, no, <laughs> like Caesar. We'd only been out for about an hour. So I took him right on home, took his candy bag, dumped it in a bowl, told him to come sit outside on the porch with me. Okay, so up to this point, not the asshole at all, just like that's a parenting moment. Your kid, you, you know, he's all hopped up on Halloween excitement. He gets a little greedy, you teach him a lesson. So far, so good. Even ending Halloween early, this is fine. So far, this is fine. Took his candy bag, dumped it in a bowl, told him to come sit outside on the porch with me. He objected as kids came by and took handfuls of his candy. He complained they were taking too much, and I told him that he shouldn't have done the same then. Okay, that might be a little too far. You already got a, a good punishment. He ended his Halloween experience that he was probably excited for early because he got an attitude problem to then force him to give away his candy to other kids and watch is a little, I think it's a little much. His father came home from work, asked why he was in his room crying, to which I explained why. He said it was really cruel to give away the kid's candy just because he was taking a little too much. I said he needs to learn not to be greedy, to which my husband said, it's okay, it's Halloween. He said I was being a jerk, that I should cut some slack for the one holiday where kids get to pig out. Come on. The one holiday where kids get to pig out? Ten years old, I'm, you're going to sleepovers, you're drinking like a whole two liter of root beer yourself. The one holiday? Like adults, they have one holiday, maybe two they get to pig out on. Thanksgiving, which is why everyone loves it so much. Christmas or Easter, maybe. Kids are pigging out whenever they, whenever they please. July 4th, I forgot about July 4th. Memorial Day, Valentine's Day a little bit. <laughs> no, I did not give away the entire bowl. Even if I had, I would have had no problem providing him more once he learned his lesson and apologized. That's... 
They're, look, I'm not, parents, you're in a tight spot, okay? But like, I'm just laughing at the whiplash of the lessons. It's like, we're going home. We're going to give away all your candy. Okay, now you learn your lesson. Here's some candy. Kid's going to be like, I don't know what the, stay, you expect a jab coming in. He's taking an uppercut right to the chin. Then all of a sudden, they're soothing him. And it's like, bam, straight shot right to the right eyeball. Starting to swell up, and they're like, oh, uh, we've cooked chicken fingers for dinner. You're eating them up. Bam, you know? Gotta give away the chicken fingers on the porch. Throw them in the garbage can. Oh, this is like, it's crazy. Never let them feel comfortable. Anyway, I'm just gonna say, like, as a, as a, as a parent, I think they're the asshole a little bit. I don't think it's, like, a lot. I just, I do think the punishment is, like, slightly more than the the crime like this part up to this was totally fine right the kid was probably excited for trick-or-treating they got greedy tried to steal some candy mom made him put it back kid copped an attitude told him to stop grabbing so much candy he screamed no that's the end of halloween that's good that's an, uh, I don't know, an hour out of uh, trick-or-treating. They expected to be out two hours, three hours. They expected to get a lot of candy. They're not getting as much candy. There you go. You've lost your trick-or-treat privileges for this year. I think that's fair. The kid probably feels like that's too severe to begin with. Now, this part where you forced him to hand out his own candy to other trick-or-treaters is based... And I think if your kid was like 15, 16, this would be sick. I would be all about this. When your kid is nine, I'm like, it's a little code of Hammurabi type thing. Like, that's just a little, I'm not saying traumatic. I'm just like, it's just one step too far. Like, I don't know if you should ever be in a position as a parent where you're like impressed with how clever your punishment is. I don't think you should ever be like, check out this unusual punitive measure I took on my child. <laughs> that wasn't that apt. I think instead you're like, you know, you could have just had them like, you know, stay in their room for the rest of Halloween, not get any candy till, you know, Wednesday or something like that. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm in the wrong or at least in the minority, though. Like, look at this. Not the asshole 60, you're the asshole 34. Everybody sucks here? Come on. Everybody sucks? Your kid is nine years old. Either the parent is the asshole or not the asshole. The kid is fucking nine. He's nine years old. You're going to be like, that kid sucks? <laughs> He's nine. Okay, so let's see what's going on. I, I got to know. What kind of made up stories? When I was a kid, I said, my, they, and then they took it all and I didn't have any left. And I, uh, uh, okay, let's see. Load me. Not the asshole, the outbursts are what gets me. When he screamed no, it sounds to me like a test of boundaries, as if he knew perfectly well what was expected to him and purposefully crossed the line in order to see if his be behavior would be corrected. And you did that. He learned a lesson when he became resentful of the other kids taking too much. That's what his behavior looks like from the view of others. Have you ever, like, been nine? Or did you just get spit out at, like, 19? Because it's like... I, I don't have solid memories of being nine. But there were just some days where you're, like, for whatever... Maybe it's something you ate. Maybe, you know, your, your brain chemistry is all coming together. you just, like... Some days you're just like, I'm going to go fucking crazy. I'm going to lose my mind. And then your parents are like, what are you doing? And you're like, I don't even know. Screw you. And then you're like, oh. you know, you just like, you just have days that are weird. And Halloween seems like it's, that's what it's based on. It's like, a, it's a day for weirdness. I'm just saying this is like, it's a little too far. Not the asshole. He's past the age where he should know how greed affects others. I'm like fucking dying here. He's nine. I mean, it's not zero. <laughs> like, he's nine years old, man. Come on. He's past the age where you should know how greed affects others. Have you ever seen like a 14-year-old? Those kids suck. They're selfish and assholes. They, 
they didn't learn the lesson you're supposed to learn at like nine, apparently. I don't, people are not like good people until they're like, they're, there's like a window. Like you kind of suck. And then like, I, I think from like 33 to 37, you're like, I'm good with the older generation. I'm good with the younger generation. And then at 37, you're like, fuck everybody younger than me. I'm riding this shit out into the sunset. You know, I, I Volkswagen, Dieselgate, I don't care, man. The 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 Golf GTI, it, I love the way it handles hills. You know, you're just there's just a brief window where you're good. You're a good person, and it's certainly not nine plus two plus plus, tr plus two from two verified streamers. It's a blessed day. I'm not saying the kid did nothing wrong. By the way, I'm just I'm more like, you know. He's nine. He's nine years old. You know, I was nine. Like, I was at a sleepover. Um, there was a, my friend, his house had a fruit bowl. They hadn't cleared it out in a while. There was a tangerine that was, like, covered in blue mold. I don't know what I was doing. I was nine. This One of my best friends was sleeping. I took the tangerine, threw it full fucking force at his head um, from, like, ten feet away. Hit him right in the side of the cheek, and just a bunch of blue spores like exploded out of it. I didn't know that was gonna happen, but he didn't wake up, and I was just like, you know, I was like, let's go. <laughs> now, should you know at age nine not to do that? Probably, but uh, you're nine. You just get you get possessed by by instincts. Not the asshole. Your hub got this one wrong. It's not about grabbing too much candy. It's about telling your son not to do so. So, okay, your hub got this one wrong. It's not about grabbing too much candy. It's about you telling your son not to do something and him screaming no. Literally nothing about the punishment whatsoever. Nothing about the severity of the punishment. You could have, you know, chopped your kid's hands off. Shouldn't have, shouldn't have said no. Shouldn't have said no like that. So now you, there's no gradient here. It's just like... You know, well, you know, if the kid didn't want to, uh, you know, suffer the consequences, if he didn't want to starve for three days, he shouldn't have said no on Halloween. Like, I don't understand. These people have just a very black and white view of the world, I think. Some of these comments are strange. Cruel, cut contact over candy. This was an entirely proportionate consequence for poor behavior. Missing out on candy on one occasion is not a significant punishment, is related to the poor behavior and completed immediately, i.e., people G, please, people, people G, people talk. This is entirely within the parameters suggested by child behaviorists. Too many children don't have parents or guardians who care about them enough to set... Enough... To, excuse me, excuse me, Merriam Webster. I believe you've forgotten the word here. Enough to set reasonable boundaries with proportionate consequences like this. Definitely, you're not the asshole. To, to which I say, that's what I say about that. Don't care, didn't ask, plus you're named like a Super Auto Pets team. Okay, that's a personal attack, I apologize. Suffice, I, I just don't like the rhetoric of this post. Like, first off, some of these comments are very strange. Tell me they're strange, you know, like, like show me through the evidence. Don't make an assertion. Cruel, cut contact over candy. I didn't read any of those. This is a classic argument reductio ad downvodio, which is when you say, I can't believe that there's people in this thread saying thing and they're downvoted to like fucking minus 500. And you're like, yeah, if you always like, let me give you a little lesson about how social media works. Um, if you always spotlight the dumbest takes on planet Earth is going to make your argument look strong to morons. You know, if you're always like, can you believe what this one person can you believe what this one person's doing in Missouri right now? The whole country is like, people are doing this now. No, it's not people. It's one person in Missouri. You can't even tie their shoes half the time. And they're like, can you believe that there's people doing this? Like, you're, you're building... It's the opposite of a straw man. It's like a, it's like a tissue paper man. Anyway, why Missouri? Hey, someone's got to be the butt of the joke, okay? Not the asshole, and it's not a disproportionate punishment. He's old enough to know better. Source, dude, just trust me. And he was being rude to you. I think taking him home was great, but it needed the follow-up punishment or else he may think he can end things for everyone involved whenever he wants by making him by misbehaving in public. 
A toddler gets taken home with no additional punishment. A nine-year-old needs to understand when he is out, he needs to behave. So a toddler, just if we're going by like the Gray's Anatomy definition, is like, you know, between the ages of uh, like one and three. <laughs> so I at least I give him a little bit of Slack, he doesn't want me to take my one-year-old baby outside trick-or-treating. And then if she cries, be like, all right, sorry, honey, but now we got to give out your candy on the front porch because you cried. Um, anyways, it's just, I don't know, man. It's all, it, they, look, all I'm saying is that my, and this is unfair, but I'm going to say it anyway. These are the kind of parents who would be like making their kids smoke a whole carton of cigarettes if they caught them smoking when they were 12 years old. They'd be like, he'll never smoke again, or he'll be addicted to it forever and have like permanent <laughs> bronchitis. <laughs> but like, it's just not that, it's just not that bad, man. You really had to get some, it's not psychological torture to make the kid give out the candy to other kids. It's just kind of like, to me, it reads like, and this is where I have some sympathy for the parent, is that it reads like mom's kind of sick of your shit. Now she's going to get one over on you, which is, I understandable, but then like when you're going to Reddit to be like, tell me I did the right thing, I'm like, that's where I, I think it, it goes a little, you got to keep that to yourself. Anyway, take me back. I just think, I, I don't think it's horrible. I just think it's a needlessly vindictive. And then in the comments, people are like, you didn't go far enough. You should have tied his shoes together when he wasn't paying attention and then uh, taken him to the longest staircase in the city. <clears throat> Am I the asshole for leaving my husband's grandmother? So just to run the math here, this lady's like fucking 80 plus. Two, stranded two hours from home after she tricked us into attending a wedding? This is like the, she's so tricky. It's like the grandma from Hereditary, man. Mother-in-law and I used to have an okay relationship. We weren't as close, or we weren't close, but she was always nice to me. Is his grandma the Joker? <laughs> Tell me you haven't seen Hereditary without telling me you haven't seen Hereditary. People are like, are you talking about uh, Tony Collette? I'm not talking about Co Tony Collette, you piece. Go watch the movie again. Don't think you were paying attention. <clears throat> Mother-in-law and I used to have an okay relationship. We weren't close, but she was always nice to me. When we got married three years ago, we only have plus ones to people. We only gave plus ones to people on serious relationships, which she was not. You didn't give your husband's mom a plus one. Come on. Like, I... <laughs> Can't you just live and let live? Why do you got to have this much control? You're really going to audit every guest at your wedding to be like, is that relationship serious or not? Just give everybody plus ones. Otherwise, you're creating like a caste system at your own wedding. Sorry, I didn't get a plus one. I know you don't need your plus one. Is it possible that I could pay you for your plus one? Like, what are you, non-fungible invites? Like, what are you doing? You got to set up like a secondary auction house for the, the limited amount of plus ones. I'm, I'm losing it, man. It's not even, we're not even into the post yet. What she was not. She fought with me about the plus ones. Oh, 